I'm going to tell you about the three key trends in AI that are really powerful that you probably haven't really heard about. Now, let me start with an example. This is an arm that can see. It's 3D printed. It has a camera in the palm of its hand. It is connected to a service in the cloud. And the cloud service can trigger the movement of the fingers based on what the arm actually sees. Okay? Let's take a look at it in this video. So watch the arm. Now, as someone brings it over a keychain, the camera in the palm recognizes the keychain. And on the right, you see the classification of the object. And a pincer grip was selected. And with a flexion of a muscle, with the muscle sensor, I can close the grip. And you pick up that. And then you can put it back down. Now watch as uh, we bring it to another object, in this case, a wine glass. Right? The classification is for a palmer action, closing all the fingers together. And with a flexion of a muscle, I can pick that up and I can put that back. You know, all it takes is a few off-the-shelf components, like a Raspberry Pi, an Arduino board, servo motors, a 3D printed arm. In fact, inside of this are fish lines that pull the fingers closed. But of course, the magic is the cloud AI service behind it, an AI service in the cloud that can recognize what the palm, the camera in the palm sees, and then match it to the grip action that should be taken so that the right grip action can be performed. And the power, of course, is and that's trainable. It's adaptable. It really is something you can set up, something that others could set up in the service, in the cloud, personalized prosthetics. That's very powerful. So that leads me to the most important macro trend which is that a cloud AI service behind every device. It might be a prosthetic. It might be any uh, device that you use in your house. Of course, your apps on your phone have AI services behind them eventually. Some of them already have AI, but others will. But everything in the world that is connected and with their Wi-Fi or internet connectivity can now be backed up by an AI service. That's very powerful and profound when you think about it. Now think about this one, the grip classification. How it works is there's a muscle sensor that I will attach to my arm here. There's a camera in the uh, hand. So through the electronics, it goes to an Azure custom vision service where a classification model has been set up, a deep learned model that recognizes the object, classifies it to the right action, and then that triggers uh, the appropriate grip classification in the servo motors connected to an Arduino board in the arm. Two undergraduates built this. Hamayal Chowdhury from University of Ontario Institute of Technology and, uh, uh, and Khan from uh, University of Toronto, Samin Khan. And they did this for the Microsoft Imagine Cup. They were the winners in 2018. And building this took them a few weeks. Of course, then the magic was provided by a cloud AI service to be able to make this device intelligent. And that's a power. Even an undergraduate can build something as powerful as this today. So why is this revolutionary? Step back and think about this device. Look, there are over a million amputations per year. That's a, an amputation every 30 seconds. WHO estimates that 30 to 100 million people in the world live with limb loss. And only 5 to 15% of these have access to prosthetics. And even though prosthetic devices have been around since the Egyptian times, now what you see on the left is a toe on an Egyptian mummy. And you can see this in the Egyptian museum. And then you see the iron hand of a knight from medieval era. His arm was cut off and he got one. Even though these devices have been there, they have been purely physical devices, and very, very severely limited. Limited by cost. The bionic arms that you have heard about today, they cost tens of thousands of dollars. And it takes a lot of effort to fit them on you. They're limited by availability. Very few people have access to it. And they're limited by the interface you can attach to the body. 
And above all, they're limited by the nervous system that we have because we've got to train ourselves to use that device. In fact, literally, we had to force our will into these devices to be able to use them effectively. How could we change all of that? What could change us uh, from having to wrestle with physical devices? How could we break these limits? And the answer is an AI or a cloud AI service backing it up. And think about this. What if you had low-cost electronics to build with it? What if you could change the game of availability with 3D printing? And so you can print these things anywhere in the world. What if you had a cloud AI service behind it that provided the ability to recognize things and make the movements? What if it could be personalized? What if it could be adapted? What if other people, your friends, could train your arm to make the right kind of movements in the right kind of environments? How, if you had, how, much, uh, how could you have customizability of all types? And what if you could tap into the knowledge of the world beyond our senses through the cloud service so that you can keep improving it? And what if all of these things came together for a very low cost, like the $100 it took for this arm to be built? That would be revolutionary, right? And imagine now every prosthetic in the world, or orthosis in the world, which is, let's say you break your arm, arm and it's in a sling, and you need assistance. What if you could get something very cheap that you could move around, but it's controlled by a cloud AI service, and all you have to do is express your intent to that cloud AI service somehow, and it does the more complex task of actually doing the grasp. See, this is the difference that these services can make. What you do is you express your intents and your constraints, and the service generates the behavior you need. So it's a generative service. Uh, the behavior is generated, but from high-level intention that you communicate. And so the future is affordable, intelligent, cloud-powered, personalized prosthetic, prosthetic devices, and really devices of every type. And that's hugely revolutionary. So let me keep this here and now talk about the next trend. So, you realize how empowering AI can be. Now, with all of this power, with 3D printing, with AI, you're going to be able to revolutionize every aspect of your life. And potentially, for millions of people who are disabled, that could be a new lease on life. So now, let's talk about how these things are built. What we're seeing is a huge explosion of APIs in the cloud that democratize AI, so that every developer can tap into this incredibly sophisticated AI without knowing AI. Now, this is a standard common trend in computing, by the way. Incredibly sophisticated algorithms are wrapped up in functions that are so simple, you just call them. When you, when you call a sort function in your programming, well, there might be an extremely sophisticated implementation of quicksort behind it, but you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to build it. Same thing is happening with AI. So now there are cloud APIs with machine learning in it. I call them AutoML. Uh, and uh, so let's look at some of the, the current trends. There are APIs for perception. There are APIs for comprehension. So perception, vision is being solved. Uh, in a lot of vision tasks are being solved. There are capabilities like face recognition, identifying a face, and you can train them. And computer vision, meaning put an image, get a caption or a description of it. Custom vision, where you can upload your own images with class labels and train them to classify. Speech, speech recognition, all of you know about it, but it's trainable now you, with the right language model, with audio environment. And text to speech, text to generating voice. Then comprehension, the world of language, language understanding. So you can train a system with the kind of uh, language that you might see, and it will recognize the intent that's expressed and call the right functions to execute them. Uh, mo uh, filtering objectionable content, or translating text, or analytics on text. And then there's a whole power of search engines, 
like the Bing search engine, including customizing the search to different domains or doing search with images, all of that is available as APIs. And these are just the start. A lot more APIs like this are coming. And what's important about these APIs is they're not just algorithms. They're built with proprietary data. So it uh, brings the power of the company that is building it behind it, whether it be a Microsoft or a Google or an Amazon, they're bringing data and algorithms and all of those things together to build these APIs, very sophisticated ones. So here's an example of a custom vision thing, code-free custom vision models. You upload images with labels, you train it, you deploy it as a REST API, you can even take those models as containers and deploy them in your software application. So what's an example of an application? Here is a, a fun example. That image, by the way, is from a real customer of ours. They asked us if we could understand all those images and catalog and organize them. It happened to be the Ministry of Justice of, of, a, of a country, um, by the way, and we, we quite couldn't uh, get access to all of that data for security reasons. But we asked ourselves, hey, how would we go about solving such a challenge? And I want to now show that with a fun example. In November 22nd of 1963, John F. Kennedy was assassinated by a lone gunman in the streets of Dallas. Or so they led us to believe, right? Uh, well, this uh, topic was so controversial that uh, Congress mandated that all the documents associated with the Kennedy assassination be released to the public by 2018. And so end of 2017 came out all these documents, lots of PDF scans. If you pile them up on the stage, it would be four huge stacks, seven feet tall. So how would we understand all of these documents? How would we uh, categorize, organize, discover who killed JFK or other controversies around it? So our software engineers took this challenge on. So they uh, cre created this thing called cognitive search. It's actually a service in Azure, which allows you to ingest all types of documents with images, with text, and all of that. You then apply these cognitive skills that I talked about. You enrich it, and then you put a search engine on top of it to explore. So let me show you the JFK files. I'll actually show you a fun demo. So now, switching. Uh, OK, so this is a website, live website, that you can actually go to jfkdemoazurewebsites.net. I'm going to just search for Oswald. And uh, let's see what comes up. Here's a PDF document. It did OCR and recognized Oswald in here. Even more interestingly, you see something here. This is a, a, a handwritten document. And OCR allowed you to recognize terms like Oswald in here, right there, right? and then. I can uh, even go down, take a picture of Oswald. Uh, the custom vision, the vision service, actually uh, captioned it. It said Lee Harvey Oswald posing for the camera. Now, he's not really posing for the camera, but close enough. It even recognizes the OCR numbers here, right? Very interesting. So now I can even see relationships between them. You can see Oswald is connected to lots of interesting people, like Sylvia Durant. And as I go look through this, I see things like Cuba in here. So what's Cuba doing in, uh, in JFK files? So let me show you. This is uh, a fun thing. We search for Castro operation in here. And we found all of this by just building this application. And you see Castro operation, and you see it, it apparently uh, in, uh, uh, around that time in the late 1960s, the CIA, in a, an operation called Operation Mongoose, ha had hired the Chicago Mafia to poison Fidel Castro with poison pills. Fun thing. No one knew. Uh, but, uh, you know, apparently the pills took a whole day to dissolve in Fidel Castro's coffee, so, or test coffee, so Chicago Mafia got cold feet and backed out of the whole thing. So, uh, another fun thing. Uh, so now let me show you another thing. Like when a government uh, releases these kind of very classified documents, you hope your name is not in there, right? Now, my name is not in there, but the name of one of Microsoft's products 
is in the JFK files. SQL Server. Well, SQL Server didn't kill JFK, right? But uh, <laughs> we found that uh, SQL Server was selected as the platform for the secure classified information facility by the CIA when they built it, and Lotus Notes uh, from IBM was selected as a medium of communication. They even gave us a whole architecture for how these things will look, you know, complete with dial-up lines and so on. So, really fun story, right? The amazing thing again is these kind of things can be built by an engineer in a very short time period. In this particular case, it took about three weeks for an engineer to build it using these APIs and uh, all of that. So let me just get back to my slide here. And these are incredibly useful. Uh, what is really useful is that you can take pretty much any data in an enterprise, uh, like legal contracts, or engineering plans, or extract form information, connect all of these things up, understand it in a cognitive sense using these cognitive APIs, and apply it. Which then leads me to the third big trend. AI enables natural user interfaces. Well, all of you know about bots and speech interfaces. There are even neural interfaces emerging. Behind all of these things is AI, and AI is enabling completely new types of interfaces. Now, one that you may not be as familiar with is ink, digital ink, using a pen. So let me show you some examples of the power of ink. Look, all of these are drawn by ink and the pen. You know, there's this famous saying, the pen is mightier than the sword. Try and type any of these things. You can't quite create that. But with the power of a digital pen and a digital link, backed by a cloud AI service, you can now start capturing these kind of creative experiences and even go beyond. So let me show you some examples. Now, we have digital inking as a service in the cloud behind PowerPoint and Word and Office 365. Here's an example of what you can do in PowerPoint. You can write, you can turn that into text. You can now draw boxes like this, especially on a touch screen. You know, you got all of that. And you know, lasso it with a circle, and then you can turn it into uh, actual printed letters. You can make those boxes look much cleaner. And then you can even draw lines between them, right? And so now you created something new. Same thing with Word. You can edit in Word with a pen. So you can put an arrow there, you can write what you want, like brand, and then it'll get inserted right there in that resume, right? And you can cut out a line, and that will clear up. And so all of these interactive experiences that you're seeing can be done with the power of the pen. So let's uh, keep going. What if I had handwriting like this? I can make it look prettier using the Cloud AI service. This is ink beautification. So that's my handwriting. And you will see it uh, getting cleaned up. Uh, this is beautified, original, beautified, original. You see that it's improved. My handwriting became better. Let me give you another example. What if I'm actually drawing diagrams? These diagrams are not as clean. I can, by the way, this enables speed as well. I can quickly draw something and then let the AI service clean it up for me. So this is the original, this is beautified. Original, beautified. Now over time, by the way, we can keep improving these things. And it'll become better and better. And your interactions with these devices will become very powerful. Um, and it doesn't stop there. Now here's uh, another example that I'm going to show, where you're drawing on a whiteboard, and uh, a picture is done, and then you can focus with your hand on the right portions of the whiteboard, and then touch any of those. the zoom catcher, which illuminates an area for selection in an extremely lightweight manner. The user can then act in the strokes, such as to recognize, but only what areas the user wants and only when the user chooses to do so. Cool. Right. So you saw that interactive power. So this is a progression of ink in, our, uh, in Microsoft. It's been a journey, but around 2017 is where the magic started happening, where we saw a big step change improvement with the power of more data and AI. And I wanted to show that to you. 
really, up until 2017, we were using a shallow machine learning models, limited data, limited accuracy, and a client API. But then starting 2017, we started using DNN. We started using much more data. We had a cloud AI service behind it. We had a cloud service that drove that continuous improvement. Significant improvement in the capabilities and all of the endpoints to which you could bring that. And now I want to end with a final story. So this is a story of an application called Helpicto. Helpicto was built by a French developer, a French developer who just used the cloud AI services to create an application to communicate with autistic children. Now, communicating to autistic children, mothers, fathers communicating, I mean, that's always a challenge. And the standard of care has been you bring up a picture book, you take pictures from it, you know, compose a pictorial conversation at the same time as you speak. And so the child see, hears you and at the same time sees the picture, and that increases comprehension. But of course, this is incredibly unwieldy. So the developer asks a question, why can't this be on a mobile phone? Why can't this whole thing just recognize my speech, make that conversation happen pictorially on a mobile phone, and so the child can be shown that, and it just improves the speed at which you can do this, and you don't have to carry a book around with you. Let me play a video and look at the subtitles so you can understand it. It's in French. Arthur, c'est un autiste sévère qui n'a pas de langage, donc qui a une compréhension assez basse des choses, assez petite, et qui a 15 ans. Il était à la crèche. À un moment donné, on a eu l'impression qu'il ne nous entendait plus et le regard était plus vide. On est allé voir une pédiatre qui nous a dit tout de suite il est autiste. On n'y croit pas. Ce qu'on lisait, ce n'était pas possible. Il ne ferait pas partie de ce tableau. Et il a fait partie du tableau le plus sévère qui existe quand même. Aucun langage, il saute partout, il crie beaucoup. Donc voilà, c'est bien fatigant le quotidien. Quand il s'énerve, c'est quand même qu'il n'a pas compris quelque chose ou qu'il veut quelque chose. Le classeur, le PEC, c'est pas quelque chose d'évident, de facile. On n'a jamais la bonne carte. La bonne carte, elle est perdue, elle est tombée sous le fauteuil. On a quand même un peu ramé. D'où l'intérêt pour lui de communiquer avec El Picto. Je parle, je donne une information à Arthur et elle est traduite par l'application El Picto instantanément en pictogramme. Peur. Et après, d'une façon orale. Microsoft a développé ce qu'on appelle des cognitive services, mis à disposition dans le cloud de la reconnaissance d'image, de la reconnaissance euh, vocale euh, et des traducteurs automatiques euh, de langue. Et ça, c'est important parce que c'est euh, nous donner la possibilité à nous, PME, d'accéder à ce qui se fait de mieux en matière d'intelligence artificielle. C'est beaucoup plus ludique, plus facile. Il comprend mieux. N'importe où, en forêt, on se balade. Et... Est-ce que tu veux boire Est-ce que tu veux faire pipi Est-ce que tu as faim Ça paraît pas grand-chose, mais en fait, c'est énorme cette différence. C'est vraiment énorme. Plus on utilise le picto, mieux ça fonctionne. Le modèle va continuer à apprendre au fur et à mesure pour faire en sorte de l'optimiser et de le spécialiser. L'autre jour, j'ai appuyé sur on va se doucher, il regarde la tablette et il va dans la salle de bain. Il n'y a pas eu de cri, il n'y a pas eu de larmes. Enfin, c'était wow, super. Quoi. Des petites choses comme ça, c'est une grande victoire. AI-powered natural interfaces can be very empowering. So AI is the new normal. It is an incredibly empowering technology. And Microsoft, by the way, is about empowering others by creating platforms on top of which all of you can build these types of powerful applications. So I hope you go away from this event inspired by the power of what AI can do for you 
and build on top of this to change your world and to change your communities and make it the next technology that empowers us all. Thank you very much. Mm.